And now I will be testing the most expensive LG A775 CPU, the QX9770. It's pretty much the same CPU as the very famous and very popular QX9650. I think the only difference like officially on paper was that the QX9770 had like an official native support for 1600 MHz front side bus. So they are pretty much the same CPU. The uh, overall results are actually a bit better on the QX9650. I think the only reason for that is that the price of the QX9770 was back then very very expensive and the ridiculous part about this CPU model is that it's still extremely expensive on the second hand market even today. When I look on websites like eBay etc, the price for a used QX9770 can be anywhere between 200 and 400 euros for one CPU. And yeah, that's pretty hefty for a CPU that's like 15 or 16 years old. So uh, I actually got one of these with a RAM based Extreme I purchased very very recently. The overall price was very very high, but I was mainly just looking for the motherboard as it was a pretty interesting uh, sample I really wanted to get. So the CPU seems pretty good on water. I managed to do like 4.6 gigahertz in W Prime 32 at like 1.36 volts. And I think it can do 4.7 at very close to, I mean, that was 1.46 volts and 4.7 should be very close to uh, 1.5. So it's much better than any of the QX9770s on air or water cooling on hardwarebot.org when taking the voltage into account. And even when looking at the QX9650 results on ambient cooling, this really seems pretty good. And I don't really want to push the CPU that high on ambient cooling as it does run pretty hot. So uh, I want to see very quickly, is it like good enough on cold? If it's not good enough, if it cannot take the top scores, I will try to sell the CPU because uh, if it really is that expensive, if there are actual purchases made at that kind of price range, it's better off to just sell the CPU if it's not good enough. So the target we are looking is like 5.6 to 5.7 plus multi-core and like 6.1 for validation. So uh, between 5.8 and 6 for single threaded stuff. So like one gigahertz higher than what I got on ambient based cooling. So Rampage Extreme Team Finland edition as uh, my Japanese board is in a bad state. Uh, this is a 45 nanometer CPU, but I don't expect any gain from the PLL modification, but we will see. So uh, just two sticks of Corsair Dominator TDX2 from Tabakar and C Sonic Prime 1300 watt platinum for uh, as the power supply and Nvidia 6500 GT just for the monitor signal with capture card once again. So I'll start in Windows XP and I will do the signal for that stuff in Server 2003 just like always. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started and Let's see how this thing performs. It's pretty interesting to run the CPU. I was actually looking for one a long time ago, but the price was just absolutely senseless. So I didn't want to spend so much money on a QX9770, but now it happened like accidentally. So nothing can do. But yeah, let's see how this goes. Okay, pretty easy boot. I'm currently at minus 118. <laughs> 5 5 50 further first attempt. I actually calculated wrong. I was like trying for five seven. <laughs> what the heck? Five a fifty first attempt. Is it really that high? Four fifty times thirteen. Yeah, it's five a fifty. So uh, doubly prime thirty two. The Atari <laughs> current rank one is five point seven five point seven sixteen. So I guess my bet was somewhat okay. Voltage wise, I might be on the high side. I'm currently at 1.86 uh, set. But compared to the T Rex container, the F1 Dark really uh, needs a lot more LN2 for the initial pull down. Okay, I think we crashed. Okay, I'll try to bring the temperatures down a bit more, like close to 130. Heal load is pretty high on the CPU. Okay, 6.2. I don't know what's the top score, but it should be far ahead. Yeah, 
Previous top score by CBG PCS from America, 6.520. So this is 6.218. Easy rank one because of the high frequency. But this is already pretty high because it's uh, not like happily passing. It's not like happily passing uh, 32, so if I want to try 1024, I'm, I need to get the temperatures quite a bit colder, like 145. There's probably headroom on the voltage, like close to 195 to 2 volts. So I think the CPU can run 585. Uh, 1024 and the W prime. Okay, so I, I ran the test around minus 140 to minus 145 initial, the first post settings. So 198.45 and we hang but we got with a capture card. So previous top score Okay, it's close though, but if it can run W Prime 32, it can usually run 1024 hours as well. Okay, efficiency is lagging behind, but this is already higher th than the QX9750. But of course, that run was much easier to pass. Okay, let's try to do it. Okay, validating. Okay, I think we got it. Yeah, I think we got it. If Pi Fast is any easier with just one core. Fifteen four seven.
375 just a validation frequency you can try that 61 50 again ah yeah okay Okay, that's the first sub 8 minute run in 32M for Yorkfield CPU. I actually didn't expect to get this good, but pretty awesome. 1900 on the memory, 664.18 command rate 1, 5950, whatever. I guess I will be stopping right now. And okay, as you can imagine, it went much better than what I expected at the start. So already 5.85 on the first boot. Very, very phenomenal result, if you ask me. So W primes, 5.9 plus, both 32 and 1024 amp. The previous QX9770s were somewhere around like 5.6 to 5.7, so huge margin over those scores. Sadly, I couldn't beat my QX9750 result, but I actually ran the frequency a tiny bit higher on the 1024M. So it's somewhere in the same uh, range. The single threaded stuff was quite hard. I don't know why it was crashing so fast in PyFast. So the score I got was just a barely bit better, like 15.52 was the first new top result and I think it was 15.47 if I managed to save that one so a tiny bit uh, tiny improvement over the previous rank one score made by high pro 5 from Greece who was a true legend in overclocking back in the day like in 2008 2009 2010 and then 32m the first ever sub eight minute run for Yorkfield architecture so seven minutes 57 seconds i actually had a spot on eight minute run with the qx9650 which is still the rank one score for that cpu qx9750 i actually didn't run 32m on ln2 which is a kind of surprise so just to compare with the qx9750 i ran superpy 32m at 4.7 on water at 1.52 so it's very close to the quality what this CPU is on water as well and 1M the first ever sub 7.4 second run for Yorkfield so I managed to beat both the QX9770 as well as the QX9650 QX9750 I didn't uh, have any stress because with that CPU I didn't have the correct tweak and I think this is already faster than that anyways so yeah and 6.13 6.13 on the validation, but I think I could have validated even 6.15. So huge result and it's a very good thing because this CPU is so expensive to bin that I was so lucky and I found a true record capable CPU on the first attempt. So I'm extremely happy. So I don't have to uh, buy any more of these or at least for now that is because all of the previous top scores were made back in like 2008 and 2009 so a long time ago anyways like 14 to 15 years ago if i'm if i remember correctly so uh, i will most likely just keep this cpu now that i that that i know it's a record capable cpu or it's the record holder cpu i mean so uh, yeah all of these scores will be uploaded to hardwarebot.org very nice thing as well that the Rampage Extreme, this Team Finland edition, could run the memories pretty uh, spot on, even at 1900 plus 664 without any issues, performance level 5. So yeah, so if you like to see these results with the fastest retail 775 CPU, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Maybe check out my Patreon page as well if you want to support my work. Yes, I still need to get 
higher validation on the York field as the highest QX9650 that was ever validated was 6.3 plus with only one core running. It's possible it was just some very magical one core that overclocked so well for that French guy. I think he was from France. So yeah, so thanks for watching some of my legacy overclocking content once again and I will see you on the next one.